Okay guys, welcome back to another video. So in this video, I'm going to be going over string gauges and uh, setups, that kind of thing. Just kind of nerd out with you guys. I know I get a lot of questions in regards to my setups as far as, uh, you know, like what tunings I use, what string gauge to go with that tuning, that kind of good stuff. So guys, don't go anywhere. Stay tuned. I'm going to go over all that with you. As mentioned in the beginning guys we're gonna dive right into this stuff so when I first started playing guitar my guitar came pretty much with a like the lightest string gauge I think is humanly possible on a guitar it was uh, I believe it was an 8 to 38 or something it was like the really puny pussy kind of strings that were on there but I had no idea I didn't know any different I didn't know anything about string gauges and things like that now you can just basically find everything uh, you know everything's a Google search away but just because it's on the internet doesn't mean you know take it as a fact either so you know a lot of uh, different strokes for different folks out there that's what I'm here for just to kind of share my input because um, there's probably not a lot of a lot of uh, people like me who have all these different tunings and have experimented and things like that to share with you guys so I thought this would be a great video to make for you guys because I I dabble with everything from standard e-tuning all the way down to low low e-tuning for like my eight string guitar for example so I have a wide spectrum of different tunings and different string gauges that I can share with you guys and hopefully you know to help you guys like steer you in the right direction and kind of give you an idea of where to start if you're new to this or if you're at that intermediate level and you're ready to uh, you know start drop tuning or down tuning uh, a lot of your guitars uh, to play what you guys are interested in playing and so we're gonna jump in right now so like I said when I first started playing guitar I had very very light strings on it I didn't that's when I was still kind of like uh, finding my way as a guitar player just uh, playing on the you know whatever strings came with the guitar which happened to be like the lightest string gauge and then over the years when I started to kind of dabble and I got a uh, you know a different guitar my second guitar was a Jackson uh, JDR 94 one of the concept models um, I started to, to tune that sucker down and I didn't even know about adjusting the bridge or anything. I would just start, you know, unwinding the tuning pegs and there goes my Floyd Rose. It'd start dropping and be sunk all the way down to the bottom of the fucking body and shit. <laughs> I, I didn't know what the fuck I was doing, but, you know, that's just, that's just part of growing up. I didn't have internet and all that shit. So I had to learn uh, later on my own once I got my Randy Rhodes and I had an instruction manual that, yeah, you actually have to keep that bridge level if you're going to... Uh, retune your guitar and all that kind of stuff. String tension, intonation, I didn't know any of that shit. But enough of me rambling on that shit, let's uh, dive in. So when it comes to my standard tuning setups, whether it's a Floyd Rose or if it's um, like a Tunematic Bridge, any of that kind of thing, um, I prefer this gauge right here. Now this is the Adario, these are the XL nickel wound strings, uh, 10 to 46. And I'll run that down to, um, I'll go down to E flat standard with this gauge as well. I don't feel really any difference as far as them feeling like too loose or rubber bandy when I'm, they still respond very well to my pick attack. As far as um, like picks go, I actually have them right here because I've been doing a lot of recording. Uh, right here I got video editing. I don't know if you're focusing or not because I can't see my goddamn screen with that big ass roadie shotgun mic in front of it. But, yeah, of course you guys probably can't see this shit because the fucking camera sucks. No, it's actually a pretty good camera, I just don't know how to fucking work it. So these are Dunlop USA 2mm uh, Gator Picks. Those are my go-to, I've been going to those for years. I used to, um, I think I, they, like, uh, you know, again, when I was a kid, just using those shitty, any kind of picks that would they'd hand you at the guitar store, those paper-thin picks. Some players are just fine with those because they get the, they're able to get the pick and their fingers and uh, most of their wrists to do the work. I've never been that kind of player. I learned uh, just digging in as hard as possible. That was me watching you know all the Slayer videos and stuff when I was growing up. Watching Jeff Hanneman pick like this and shit. I thought that was the way to do it so I never had anybody teach me how to hold the pick, how to pick, any of that stuff. And that's just kind of what worked for me so that's the way I've always been playing. Luckily I see other players out there that play the same way and you know they might get criticized for it and whatnot but it really doesn't matter it's about it's about your playing it kind of makes you have your own identity the way you stand out which is nice you know you got that individuality as a player but gator uh the gator two millimeter dunlop picks has been my go-to and um moving on to another string gauge that i prefer when i jump up to so when i start going to d standard and c sharp standard 
I'll bump up to uh, 10 to 52s. Again, this is Diodario, and I'm in no way affiliated or sponsored by this company whatsoever. This uh, this string company, I actually, um, I got turned on to these when I was playing in a band called Gut Rot back in 2004, 2005. At that point, I was using like Dean Markley Blue Steels, I believe. I think that's what I was playing on at the time. And uh, they, were, they were okay at the time, but once, uh, John from Gut Rot, when he showed me these strings that, and I got to uh, experiment with them, I fell in love with these strings. The brightness, the tone, how long they last, everything about these strings I love and I just, I've been using them ever since. Probably a runner-up second place that I've used for quite a while too in between would be like uh, the Ernie Ball strings, but this is just, this is just my, you know, Grand Slam home run right there. I love Diodario strings. I do, I don't just have Diodario, I've been, uh, here it is right here actually. So I've been experimenting, luckily I kept the empty box just for this video. So this is a company called Stringjoy. I don't have a final verdict on um, like how I really feel about these strings, my overall opinion. Now these are 11 to 90, these, this was a string gauge that I would, uh, I wanted to put on my H string because I was having some intonation issues, even with it having a super long scale. The guitar actually has a 20, I think it's a 28. It's either 3 8 or 5 8 scale. I'd have to put a tape measure on to uh, you know, confirm that again. But even with, uh, like I, I originally started with a set, uh, 10 to 74 set, and that wasn't holding intonation. I tried 9 to 80, because usually you can get away with, uh, you know, on your, on your treble side, you can get away going a little bit thinner, and you won't have as many issues. But I was having all the issues on, the, uh, on my bottoms, and uh, it just wasn't holding intonation. And then finally I bumped up to these 11 to 90 gauge strings and I got it in, um, I took it down to low, low E standard on top and then the set, the last seven strings would be like how you would drop tune for like a, a drop A kind of tuning. Because a band called Catalepsy does that kind of tuning and that's what I was going for for that guitar. So I have it set up that way and it's been holding intonation great but again, I don't have a final opinion on these strings just yet because uh, a lot of my recording and a lot of my writing and stuff that I've been playing, I haven't, uh, they haven't had uh, any of the guitars with this setup on here. I do have on my, so I have a Jackson 7 string, Corey B 7 string as well. Uh, that one has 10 to 64s on it from this company. And uh, yeah, I, I haven't really played too much around on it to, uh, yeah, to get a final opinion on these strings. but. Uh, so far, so good uh, with the little bit of time that I do have on these. What's nice about this company, though, is when you go on their website, if you need um, like a custom set, they have a calculator on there. They have an instruction on how to, you know, how to set your strings up, like to keep an even amount of tension across your fretboard. Um, and then also at the same price, if you want to order a custom set, you'll get them for the price of like if they when they sell just their uh, their packs that are pre-made ready to go for you you can get them for the same price it's not any extra money so it's a it's a great way to go um, yeah definitely check out string joy if you guys haven't yet or haven't heard from or heard about the strings and moving on now when I start going down to like drop B this is my uh, this is my choice right here so these are 13 to 56 I did have 11 to 56 the, the guitar that I'm referring to is um, so it's my BC Rich Kerry King V with the tribal pattern on it uh, that you guys have seen. I've done many, many songs and many, many videos with that guitar. It's an amazing guitar. I had the NYXL Diodario 11 to 56 originally set up on there. And I just, um, I've mentioned this in videos before, I do not like those strings. Um, that, that was uh, like the first time I ever experimented with those strings. And this might not apply to everybody. I know a lot of people probably like those strings and uh, they just weren't for me. I found Compared to these strings, not only did NYXL strings cost more money, they seem to die out faster, they seem to lose their tone, their brightness faster, and they were just, to me, they were just pieces of shit strings, so I just went to what's cheaper and sounds better to my ear, and that's why I've been going with these strings. Um, you know, like other other string companies that people I've seen that they, that they talk highly of would be like, I, I can't even I can't even stand the string company because it's just the results I've had with them. But the GHS strings I think are absolute trash. If they've uh, if they've improved within the last 10 years, then I would probably give them you know the nod. But back when I was trying to use those strings, I found that 
I would set the guitar up with those strings and then five minutes later the strings sounded like a, a set of strings that were two years old. I've popped them and they're just, they're crap. I fucking hated those strings. Now again, I don't know if uh, they're like that anymore, but those were the results that I got from those strings. Don't like those strings at all. Like other strings that I've experimented, like the Dunlops, those were, yeah, they were just okay. But again, I mean, I can't say enough about these strings. These are my favorite strings. Those are always my go-tos. So that's uh, for 13 to 56 drop B, that's perfect for it. A little bit heavier on the treble side, but I don't do too much soloing, so I don't really feel it that much. And this string set here is probably going to be for my, uh, I got a, I recently just got another guitar. I just can't stop buying guitars because I just freaking love this shit so much. So I got uh, this 12 to 54 set. This is a heavier gauge set. This is going to be for my standard B tuning on a very nice Randy Rhodes that I got. You guys will, uh, I haven't even shared that unboxing yet, the time I'm making this video. I just, I've been so damn busy, but you know, you guys will see that video uh, shortly. But these strings are gonna go on that for uh, just standard B tuning. This is 12 to 54. Those should be more than good, more than enough tension. If not, if I absolutely need to bump it up to a 56, I can do that. And then uh, we're not gonna cover too much with these strings because I know most of you guys that come to my channel are guitar players, not bass players. Um, this is uh, Diodario Pro uh, the Pro Steels. These are great strings for bass. And that one's just a standard XL set. Uh, for, yeah, that's just a, a standard string gauge for, yeah, my standard tuning stuff. And do I have anything else here to share? No, I don't. Now, as far as, um, like when it comes to guitar setups, I handle all that on my own. I just kind of go by feel. I, I kind of eyeball the strings and I'll pick up for, you know, if uh, my guitar is buzzing acoustically or anything like that. Make sure the neck is, you know, straight or just a little bit. I, I typically will put just a little bit of relief in the neck to where it comes up just a little bit like that because I am an aggressive picker. So I, I, I have to try to eliminate um, any kind of the buzz that I might cause from my aggressive pick attack. So what I tend to do is, some, some guitars I can get away with this where I have a perfectly straight neck, but not, not all the time. Just depends on the guitar. Um, I, I do bring the neck up just a little bit, just so it has just a little bit of that, just barely. And uh, that helps uh, get around any kind of fret buzz that I might get when I'm, when I'm picking really hard. But I always go for you know a low action kind of setup as low as I can get it with a uh, minimum amount of, uh, of buzzing. And, um, I don't get too much into like the measurements I used to and then I found when I would set them up going off the uh, yardstick measurements that, that they uh, recommend when it comes to setting up for low action it just wasn't for me I felt I could go lower so I would push I would just push that envelope as close as I could uh, to get away with it and you know the guitar would turn out play better for me and um, it just uh, it was an overall better setup and um, as far as uh, like if I have any issues, because sometimes I do have issues with when it comes to uh, you know uh, my setup. Sometimes the guitar I'll just I'll be having nothing but headaches, and you know I'll have to basically call in an expert, and uh, I'll I'll end up having like a professional take care of anything that's causing me any kind of headache. And uh, you know you guys, I would recommend the same thing if you can't quite figure it out. I mean a lot of times you can find all that information on YouTube or find it on. Uh, you know, the old message boards, all that information is out there now, but if you ever find that you're running into, you know, like a roadblock when it comes to setting up a guitar, just take it to a professional and, you know, they'll definitely take care of you. It's going to cost you a little bit of money, but if they can get, if you can just transfer that headache onto them, you know, I'd much rather do that, and I've done that. I've had to do that a couple times with some of my guitars, but for the most part, I'm able to set them up uh, with the way I play and everything just fine. So before I wrap this video up, if there's anything else that I could add to it, um, I would say that uh, don't get too misled or scared of uh, when you come across information, especially if you guys are looking to tune down your guitars, you, you want to experiment with lower tunings, and if you have like a, you know, like your, your basic 25 and a half inch scale, and by the way, that's what applies to um, all these guitars that I, was, that I was telling you guys about just now. Except for that one right there, my Bastard V, I used to have that in standard uh, detuning. I had 10 to 52s on there, and uh, that, that happened to uh, set up just fine. It's just a matter of experimentation. Luckily, when I intonated and set it up, everything turned out fine. The tension felt good. 
And uh, sometimes that happens with uh, guitars, they won't always feel the same. Like for instance, when I was on my eight string and I was having all those problems, even at that 28 inch, at 28 plus inch scale length, I was still having uh, intonation issues. Sometimes it just happens. Sometimes the guitar is just destined to give you fucking headaches and you just gotta kinda deal with it accordingly. But yeah, for the most part, all this information that I'm giving you guys is basically based on a 25 and a half inch scale. And to, uh, to add to that, what I was uh, just about to get into before I close this video is, um, you'll find a lot of information where people were always, will always recommend, and uh, they're, not, they're not really wrong about this, but at the same time, they're not entirely accurate when, they, when it comes to them saying that, um, that you can't use a 25 and a half inch scale and you know, tune this tuning, that tuning, whatever. Particularly if you're tuning like to um, like A standard, or if you're trying to go lower, that's where you might start running into a little bit of uh, of a problem when it comes to um, intonation issues. As far as like if you have a Floyd Rose, and that saddle piece has to move back for the for the string to intonate properly, and then uh, you might have to run into other modification issues with uh, you know filing out your nut and things like that. That that can cause some problems, but it's not with every guitar. I mean, bands have been doing this for years. They've been tuning, you know, those kinds of tunings and getting away with it just fine. So this is not any different. So don't let that scare you off too much. You don't absolutely need a baritone scale. You can get away with it, but a lot of times, like again, it's just gonna be a little bit of experimentation. And that's why I figured, because I've been down this road before where I've, I've, I've had guitars set up an A standard on a 25 and a half inch scale perfectly. It caused me no problems. They set up fine. They played great. And we're talking, you know, Floyd Roses. We're talking uh, Tunematic Bridges. Those kinds of things, all on 25 and a half inch scales. Had no problems whatsoever. And the same can apply to you guys too. So don't let that deter you too much. So that's going to do it for this video, guys. Hopefully you learned something. Hopefully I was able to help you guys in any way that I could in regards to uh, these different tunings, these different string gauges, all that kind of stuff. So we're just going to wrap this video up right now. Wrap it up, but don't listen to rap because it's fucking garbage. And keep it metal, guys. I'll talk to you. Take care.